phrase you will often see bouncing around on the internet is the Dunning-Kruger effect. The Dunning-Kruger effect is based on the work of Justin Kruger and David Dunning, although it has been extended by others since. It all started with a paper they published in 1999 in the Journal of Personality and Social Psychology entitled Unskilled and Unaware of It, How Difficulties in Recognising One's Own Incompetence Lead to Inflated Self-Assessment. The idea behind it basically being that if you're too incompetent to be any good at something, you're too incompetent to be able to judge how bad you are at it. Uh, at the very start of their paper, they actually put a little story about a guy called MacArthur Wheeler who tried to rob a bank, I put a little clip up there, uh, who was amazed to discover that he showed up on CCTV because he had rubbed lemon juice all over his face. It's actually even sadder than the story because it was in an interview with, I think it was Dunning that I read, that he said that the guy had actually tried to test his idea, he'd tried to be a scientist, he'd actually tried to do it, he'd smeared his face with lemon juice and tried to take a photograph of himself. You can just imagine the guy with tears streaming down his face as the lemon juice burns its way through his eyeballs, trying to photograph, missing his face, looking at the camera and thinking, well, I wasn't in the photo, it must work. The guy was too incompetent to realise that he was too incompetent to be a bank robber. What they did in this study was they did a number of tests of some Cornell University students and the idea behind all of the tests was that they would have to assess their own performance and they would rank that against how well they'd actually done. Uh, the first one was in humour where they were given jokes to rate as how funny they thought they were and that was compared to some professional comedians and you'll see if you look at the graph that the people who did the worst assumed they'd done a lot better than they have. Uh, and you'll notice that so at the other end, people who'd actually done the best had actually underestimated their performance. And I've noticed in life that seems to be the case. People who think they're stupid normally aren't. People who don't think they're stupid you have to worry about. Which worries me as, well, I've never thought I was stupid. Hang on. Uh-oh. Oh well, you get the idea. Uh, they did three more studies in this first uh, initial uh, bit of research. They did on grammar and rational thinking. And if you look at the results you'll see that very much the same sort of things come out that people's in fact there is very little variation very often in people's uh, perceived performance but there is a lot of variation in the real performance and the result is that the people who do badly underestimate uh, interesting I, I believe that follow up studies have shown and this is not a case, this is not an opportunity to have a have a bash at the yanks as it were but the the, the effect seems strongest in americans uh, at least strong i think it was in asians they found it was least strong and sort of you know middle of the road somewhere in europeans whether that's the case or not i don't know i would like it to be true obviously because then i could be smug about being european but as we all know wanting something to be true doesn't mean it is true. Uh, moving on to their final conclusion then was this idea that people who are bad at something are so bad at it that they can't judge how bad they are at it. Now what I would like to opine, as Prof Myth would say, I've been watching too many of his videos, is that when you combine the Dunning-Kruger effect with religious conviction things get compounded. If we think of our favourite uh, YouTube and elsewhere creationists, they will be often, they will tend to be people with no scientific training or expertise or background, yet they don't see that there's a problem with them claiming to know more than people who've spent their entire life studying biology. They're so incompetent at biology that they can't judge their own competency at it. So when you get Ray Comfort talking about the fact that uh, evolution can't be true because who did the first male dog uh, breed with? Did it have to wait for a female dog to evolve? Every biologist thinks he can't mean that. He must just be making this stuff up and lying. The sad thing is he probably believes he's making a good argument. Uh, other examples are Nephilim Free with, with everything he's ever said. Uh, truthful Christian, bless him, with his diminishing pine cones proving that evolution can't possibly have happened. The guy doesn't seem to think for a moment that how on earth is it that he could have come up with the solution and spotted something that all the world's professional biologists didn't spot? And I think that is where things get dangerous when you combine Dunning-Kruger, which affects everyone in all our lives all the time, with the religious conviction of some kind of revealed truth and stops people actually even checking that they might be too incompetent to be judged correctly. Anyway, thank you very much. Good night and whatever.